Hi, it's repair time. This one comes from home. This is uh, our amplifier that we use out on the back deck that Mrs. E V Blog mostly uses for her um, outdoor workouts that she does. So uh, it's just stopped working. So the symptom is, is that it just doesn't uh, turn on. It's got one of these soft uh, power buttons here, um, but it did actually rain and like really heavily and the gutters overflowed and apparently it did like rain on this thing. Uh, Mrs. E V Blog claim she put a towel over it and stuff but as you can see it's uh it's got a lot of dirt and stuff anyway we're getting to, to, there's some renos going on at the moment um and yeah it's quite dusty out there um but still uh really there's i don't know uh, so water ingress is the only potential thing now it didn't trip the earth leaky jar circuit breaker because this is uh a two pin jobby so there's no um earth pin on it so really i i don't know usually if you get water in there water's actually not that bad for electronics, it can be bad long term because you can corrode things and everything else and the contaminants in the water and stuff like that. But um, I've done a video where I actually even like complete mud. I've done a video where I took an oscilloscope. I still got it. Here it is here. Ta-da. I still have it. Um, I took this uh, Tektronix TDS220 through a mud obstacle course and it got filled with muddy water and everything. And I just hosed the thing off um, and it worked afterwards. Absolutely amazing. Even though it was filled with mud and crap, I literally got the hose on and, shh, and, and, and it's actually powered up and worked. Anyway, I'll link in that video uh, if you haven't seen that. So really, I wouldn't have expected uh, I, you know, just some water ingress to, like, just suddenly stop it working. I don't know, maybe something with the soft uh, power switch. Obviously, it's going to have some sort of internal fuse, but really, I wouldn't expect such a low, uh, like, impedance that would blow the fuse or anything. But anyway, only one way to find out. It's one of these, uh, you know, Bluetoothy uh, things. So it connects to uh, the dumpster PC we've got, which uh, has the, uh, which connects to this via uh, Bluetooth. And it's nothing special. Uh, 24 watt uh, power consumption. I think it's like 10 watts plus 10 watts power output or something. More than enough to drive our uh, outdoor speakers. We don't use the uh, stock speakers with this thing. So I'll just plug her in for you. And um, yeah, nothing. Absolutely nothing whatsoever. Usually it, you know, it has, um, I think, something on the screen when it's powered off or so, or it's got some lead somewhere. Can't actually remember, but yeah, um, it just doesn't, doesn't power up at all. So, mm, let's take it apart. Comically long screwdriver time. And Mrs. EV blog claims she doesn't think that water got into it. So, I mean, there's no um, grills on the top. Like there's only like vents on the back and some down the bottom on the side here. So it's just puzzling. Yeah, it did. There was a downpour, apparently. And some of it leaked down the side of the wall and got onto the bench where this thing sits. Ah, there we go. It's, uh, yep. Uh, apply more force. Oh, yeah. Yeah, look, something's inside of here. So, yeah, waters. Look, mud's, mud's gotten onto there. So I don't know how that got through the top case. I, yeah, it might have, like, splashed in the back. Maybe I think that's... Yeah, but, like, all the mud's up the front. Look at that. Uh, to, well, uh, I don't know. Oh, maybe it's... Yeah, it got through the front tray. Okay, it leaked in through the front tray. All right. So, that makes sense. Jeez, okay. Ah, oh, this is ugly. I'm going to have to get all the mechanism out before I can get to the main board down the bottom. Bummer. Board's on the top there. We've got our uh, switch array there. They've gone to a fair bit of effort. There's a few, quite a few passives uh, on there. And then that's the uh, near field comms uh, chip so that you can uh, just sync up your uh, shoe foam with it, sit it on top, and Bob's your uncle. And it's a vacuum fluorescent jobby for you vacuum fluorescent fanboys. And it's interesting, like this is a modern unit. It's interesting that they still, you know, there's this still a thing. It's manufactured by uh, Futaba. Well, there you go, Futaba there. And uh, yeah, it's interesting that there's still a thing. Uh, rather than just have, I don't know, a LED display or an LCD display. Um, LCD is going to be cheaper surely than a vacuum fluorescent i don't know maybe it's what the market expects out of a product like this all right thoughts in the comments okay there's only two screws on the back of the cd transport mechanism but it looks like yeah it's it's not going to come out unless i get the uh like the front decorative cover piece off 
Um, that's that's really annoying because all this, the front panel, is like holding that all in. Like, oh no, no, I get maybe if I take the front panel off first. Oh, you've got to get the bottom clips and the side clips all to all together. Jeez, that's uh, that's really annoying. But yeah, it's gonna work, I think. There you go. Aha! There you go. Yeah. I think I would have come a gutser if I tried to get that front bezel off there. Looks like... Uh, still... No, that still seems to be the go, though. I don't know. It seems to be... don't know how that's attached to the transport mechanism. It's rather annoying. Here you go. It's open. And there's the main PCB. It does look... does look a little bit crusty. Yeah, that top board certainly looks like it could do with a clean. Um, in fact, well, you clean the whole board, of course. Anyway, uh, we've got a Sun Plus uh, chipset there. There's our Bluetooth module down there. That's seen better days, doesn't it? Yeah, the whole board could really do with a, a clean-up. So it wouldn't rule out something logic level on here that's, like, stopping the soft uh, power circuit from starting on. Oh, look, at that. look over there. Yeah, that's, that's pretty crusty. Oh, look over there, yeah. Yeah, it all needs a good clean. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get that ultrasonic bath that I was talking about getting. Um, damn it. Anyway, uh, power supply down here, pretty clean. Not gonna say clean as a whistle, but it does look pretty clean. It's a Sony branded jobby, so that's interesting. And as I said, they, they always have an input fuse, but I, I'd be very surprised. I can buzz that out first thing, but I'd be very surprised if uh, that's actually blown. Of course, I could just measure the uh, power consumption on the mains input, but I'm just going to power this thing up and measure the uh, DC output. Yeah, I mean, 13 volts. Would have expected 12, but 13 is fine. Um, so, yeah, uh, as I suspected, the power supply isn't blown because when like, you get water ingress like this, um, it, it's not going to be enough. Like, it's not going to be low impedance enough, typically, like, to blow a mains rated fuse. I can't see what the rating is on that one down there, but, you know, it's going to be, like, you know, half an amp. It's designed for, like, gross overloads uh, when you get, like, you know, a shorted power amp or something, you know, something really bad like that or something fails inside the power supply and it's designed to protect the, you know, the thing from going up in flames. It's not designed to prevent just a bit of, uh, you know, leakage on, on the main board. So I'd say... It's a um, it's a cleaning problem with the main board. Um, there's some yeah low impedance path. The, it looks pretty horrible. So let me get that board out. Well, unfortunately, that is the ribbon cable that goes off to the LCD. It doesn't look terrific. Probably looks even worse on 4K. You're watching this in. On my it looks bad enough on my little uh, camcorder screen here. Blech. That was secured in by what I thought was only two screws, but then they had a sneaky little bugger. Um, like, folded metal thing there, which, like, clip, which went over that. So I had to sort of get the back uh, cover off a bit, and there it is down there. That just went into a slot in the PCB like that. So, nice, extra attention to detail, but, uh, yeah, a bit annoying, unless you know. Now, normally, this would be a classic case for just throwing in a uh, ultrasonic bath. But unfortunately, yeah, I um denied about getting one and never got around to it. So, yeah, it looks, looks pretty crusty, doesn't it? It is not great at all. There's that top board on, a, like, a daughter board. Not sure uh, why they bothered doing that. Maybe some optional module, but... And just that flat flex connector going off to the uh, display there. That's crusty burger. Look at it. So, yeah, you'd, like, have to suspect that at a minimum. Uh, maybe this thing actually worked and it's just a display that's dead. So it looks like we've got uh, the amplifier, which would be a Class D jobby, under the can here. Um, this package here with uh, the big power pins there, that's probably the uh, CD... Uh, motor drive, I would say, um, given that, you know, this all buggers off to the uh, CD along here and stuff. Let's get that off, and there you go. Oh, it's got a couple of extra pins there as well, um, and there's something under there as well. Uh, that'd be, uh, oh, that, that's your audio in, okay? So that's your audio in, there's your, uh, just a um, op amp or whatever. 
um, for your audio in and uh, not too much else. So, all right, let's give it a bell. Uh, I've got some Electrolube Ultra Solve here. Um, that'll do the trick. So, let's go. And we look at that. And let's get in there with the conductive brush and give it a good scrub. Just make sure, like, you know, things like little crystals like that, you don't break them off. That one is uh, celastic down, so that's pretty good. But sometimes you've got to be a bit careful because these are stiff bristles, but you want the stiff bristles. Get that Bluetooth jobby. But I'm more concerned, really, with the LCD around there. And uh, LCD display cable. That looked pretty horrid. But anyway, I'll spare you the details. I'll go over the whole thing. Um, the bottom looks really clean on this, but I'll give it a scrub as well. And uh, we'll see what happens. Now, unfortunately, I can't get inside those cans unless I want to desolder them. That's a bit of a pain in the backside. Um, but I don't think that's going to be a problem for, uh, like, you know, powering this thing up. It seems to be like a logic uh, problem that's just actually preventing this thing uh, from starting up. I mean, it's, you know, I'll probably give the uh, front board over here a clean. Um, so, you know, there's the uh, front panel power switch. It looks really clean, but, you know, you never know. But uh, just cleaning all the connections and reseating all the connectors and just getting the gunk away from between the uh, pins or the processor pins on here, that should do the trick. Oh, our sticker's gone. So there you go, that looks way better. I'll let that uh, drip dry and then I'll give it another go with some isopropyl, I think. It, uh, yeah, there you go. This stuff mostly evaporates, but I'll give it another going over just for good measure. Okay, we'll do a quick power up. I won't plug in everything. I won't plug in the CD stuff over here. I don't think that's going to... Well, it may matter. It may not pass up in some internal test or something. But anyway, I want to see if we actually get anything. So power on and our display's plugged in. Our front panel um, is plugged in. Oh, hello. Something flashed. We're getting a blue flishy flash. We were not getting that before. That is progress. Okay, it's turned on. Can't remember if you have to assume you have to press it. Oh, yeah, now it's going at a faster rate. It's recognizing something. Okay, so, yeah, yeah, okay, it's doing something. Maybe it needs all the CD stuff plugged in before the display will show anything. All right, now I've got everything plugged in. Let's give it a bell. Should get the blue flishy flash. Oh, transport mechanism just moved. Yep, yep, so it's doing a, it's doing a power on thing. And, yeah, blue flash. Okay. Still nothing on the display. So what do we know? We know that the processor's working because not only is it flashing the uh, Bluetooth LED there, but it's, um, it's moving the transport mechanism. So the processor has to be basically fully operational to do all that. So why it's not powering on? I don't know. I still reckon the power supply is good. I'd have to start checking local rails and stuff. Hang on, I think I can see those segments are very dimly lit. I've turned off my studio lights. I got, well, look, I was not imagining that. There is something there. Let me press that power button again. Yeah, yeah. That's, that, that says uh, BT. That says Bluetooth. On, BT on. Yep, yep, voltage, yep. Yeah, it's actually working. It's working. I think we just have a display drive issue. Oh, there you go. See, these sorts of things you don't notice. Like, you have to go, well, is it on or not? Vacuum fluorescence, they can be really dim. Um, so, yeah, like, often they're not just a go-no-go -no -go thing. They can be really dim like this. So there you go. That's a really good example of how you really have to uh, you know, in this case, I basically I had to put my hand over that and I could see the faintest thing and I turned the studio lights, like all the lights off in here now, and um, yeah, I can just see it. So it's functional. It's actually displaying the correct stuff. It's just, it's not bright at all. Aha! There you go. I think I see some corrosion on the pins here. 
and I'll link in my uh, vacuum fluorescent uh, tutorial. Um, I've, I think I've got a tutorial video on how they work and also a uh, hacking video driving them um, as well. So I'll link those in if you haven't seen it, but yeah, um, there you go. That could cause a low impedance pass. So I'm going to clean that up and uh, I'll get back to you. All right, that's cleaned up. Let's give it a bell and see what happens. Yeah, tape transport moves. Blue flishy flash. Now again, it's still very dim. So that didn't fix it. Hmm. And yeah, we'll give the back a thorough shellacking as well. Okay, well cleaning this board hasn't helped, so time to measure voltages. So I'll measure the cathode voltage first on the VFD. It's usually going to be these two outer pins like that because the uh, the wires in there are going to go right across like that. So we should get typically like four and a half, five volts, something like that. AC, that is. So what do we get? Uh, 0.8. Uh, Bueller. Bueller. And by the way, um, no, VFD is not a vacuum fluorescent display mode. <laughs> That's variable frequency drive. So if we actually select that, um, it uh, adds a filter in there, adds a low pass filter and that should read lower yeah it does so what we need to do is actually check the frequency on that because that is really low so and uh, 28 kilohertz yeah that's pretty high this meter is not the best best for those sorts of frequencies so let me grab another okay the 121 gw will go up to 100 kilohertz so let's give it a bell and ac and we're talking aha 2.9 volts is still not um, that's still lower than I expected though. So anyway, it is there. It is uh, 28.5 kilohertz there on the secondary display. So, uh, um, not going to worry about that for now. I'm going to go uh, check the um, anode voltage now. Alright, so I've had a look at the data sheet for this chip and uh, it looks like uh, 30 volts um, typical anode uh, voltage, but Let's actually um, let's try and find a rail, because there's a it should be a 5 volt rail on here. So choose a suitable size large cap, like that one. We might get lucky. Oh, wrong mode. DC. In fact, we'll um, turn auto hold on, shall we? And so then, because the board's like flapping around in the breeze here, it's just like floating around. So it's in those particular cases, it's... you. To get good contact can be hard, so I'll just go like that, and that will auto hold, and 5.1 volts. So, um, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so the chip's getting voltage. Now I've got to find the pin that has, uh, supposedly, has, uh, you know, 20, 30 volts on it. Okay, it should be pin 27, and there's pin 23. 3 volts ain't going to do it, I'm afraid. Uh... Something's wrong there. All right, let's have a look at the VFD display board here. And the VFD itself, there you go, the 14 segment jobby, no, that's seven segment uh, rubbish. So that's really neato. You can see the uh, traces. Oh, oh, there we go, isn't that beautiful? Wow, look at that. There you go. That's a thing of beauty. A joy forever. Thumbnail. So that's an interesting looking VFD, I don't see a grid or your regular cathode wires on that. Like there's usually, you know, the string of cathode wires and then there's your grid and I'm not seeing any of that. Quite the modern, like there's lines going through some of those dots there. You can see each trace there. Just buggering off to, these aren't individual dots, of course, this is one segment, like four of them like that, five of them here, for example. Um, it's, it's more like an LCD than it is a VFD, but this is certainly a VFD. It's, yeah, I know it still has some contamination under there, my, my brush couldn't, didn't seem to get in there very well, but that's not stopping it. These are shorted out together, there's your contacts for your... Uh, one side of your cathode, there's your contacts for the other side. If we actually measure the resistance between there, yeah, six ohms, something like that. That's what you'd expect. Um, that sounds pretty typical. And so we know we've got our cathode 
uh, filament there, and we've got a filament voltage. Don't know if it's enough, but, you know, like 2.9-ish volts, something like that. It's going to do something. There's going to be some electrons boiling off there of some description. Uh, whether or not that's high enough, I don't know. But anyway, aha, check it out. Lots of voltages over here. Didn't see that before, really. Plus 12, minus 24. There you go. Okay. Right, and oh, it's, they're labelled quite nicely. VFD clock, there. That'd be this. That'd be these test points. Yeah. So I assume this is the pinout for over here. And there you go. So more test points over here. Uh, Bluetooth LED connection. Yep. NFC. Yep. ADC key one. ADC key one and key two. That would mean that they're using a resistive um, divider. Uh, for the key matrix, the key matrix. So that's, I'd say that's how they're measuring the, using, me measuring the keys is via an ADC on the micro. Standby, plus five volts, infrared, ground. 12 there, we need to measure that. Okay, and if we're not getting minus 24 volts on there, then the rest of it is knackered. What was it, pin 27 over here, which was the fifth pin in. One, two, three, four, five. That was the anode voltage, and you see the trace is thicker. It looks like it's buggering off like on this bus thing here, but it ain't, because look, the trace is a bit thicker. Eh, half a bee's dick thicker than the other traces, which indicates, aha, uh -huh, it's not part of a bus, right? Because any PCB layout engineer worth their salt is going to lay out all the same with traces, right? So this one's deliberately thicker for a reason. And if we follow the money, always follow the money, aha, uh -huh. instead of going with all the others, it buggers off down a via there. Look at that. Flip that, oh, oh, right, no, we've got the screen, yeah. I don't know where it's headed under there. I don't really want to bend the screen because you're not going to get too many bends on that before you bend it back and you're going to break them. So, but yeah, anyway, it does bugger off. So you could actually, um, so we could buzz that out. Okay, here we go. Pin 27 there to, well, yeah, pin 12. Yeah, that's the minus 24. Okay, so it's going over there. So I think we were reading three volts on that, weren't we? So the minus 24 come in, I, it's interesting. I thought it was generated on this board, but it's not. Um, no, like I thought they might have had like a little switcher on there or something that generated the minus 24, but no, it's coming over from the main board. So it's a problem with the main board. So I'll, I'll put this back in and I'll just re-verify that pin there because it, you know, it was a little bit hard to probe there. I think I got the right one, but yeah, um, we're getting somewhere. But yeah, uh, it looks like there's probably a fault in that coming from the main board. And that's rather interesting from a design point of view because... If, if I was designing this, I would have included, like, because you're not going to use that 24 volts for anything else, I don't think. So, like, I, I would have put the converter on this board, really. It just, it doesn't make sense to sort of put it over on the main board, un unless you happen to be using it for something else, but, I don't know, doubt it. So, a quick sanity check, again, 5 volts there, and where was it? There. No, we're getting that 3 volts. That should be 24 volts. So we are not getting our 24 volts from the main board. That's annoying. Got to get the main board out. Oh. And of course, Murphy bites you on the bum every time because this is the cable that needs to go down to here, which then needs to uh, go to the power button, which switches the damn thing out of standby to turn the supply on. <laughs> so, and if I bring that down so I can plug it in, I can't access anything because of all the mechanicals, and I can't disconnect the CD mechanism because then it, it won't boot. It's got some power on thing. Oh, I'm um, bloody Murphy. Okay, I found that I could temporarily put it back in, power it up to bypass the boot sequence uh, checks, and then disconnect the cables and move it back. So now it's now it's on. You can tell by it's flashing at the faster rate there. Now I can at least get down and probe things. Nah, I still can't measure 24 volts over here. I'm wondering what's inside this can, because it doesn't make sense. Here's our Bluetooth module, right? Um, here's our amplifier module up the top. What's in that? 
Could that be the supplies and they're trying to shield it? Could that, could that be the switching supplies? Because all we've got out of here is uh, 13 volts uh, going over. So there's only one supply rail going over from the power supply module over to here. I'm wondering, and given the close proximity to there, I'm wondering if that's the switcher. Because I don't see how, like, you know, it, it does anything over here. So I'm wondering, there's a switcher under there. I might, uh, I'm going to get this board out and have a, have a squeeze. It's a pain in the ass to get it off, but it might be worth it. Tongue at the right angle. And a little pro tip. Helps to have a screwdriver with a like flathead with a nice little bend on it. So that you can eh, eh, lever up. Um, things like this. <laughs> Called it. Totally. And it, yeah, so there's a switcher under there. And that makes... Well, I was going to say it makes sense because, um, well, from a troubleshooting point of view, because this is the only place we couldn't clean. And you can see, yeah, it's, it's pretty crusty under there, isn't it? Like, yeah, yeah, look at C10 up there. Ah, uh, yeah, that's nasty, isn't it? Oh, is that going to, oh, was that me? Is that got a chippy chip? Um, I'll double check measure that, but I, they're pretty robust. They're, uh, that's an actual physical coil in there. You can actually see the little bits of wire going over there, but no, nah, she's right. Um, yeah, no worries. That's just crusty burger, isn't it? So, I'm going to give that a good clean, and hopefully that will come up a treat. Because that's obviously, like, here's your power in, right? So here's your power in. Comes through a little inductory there. And, uh, or a ferrite FB, ferrite bead. There you go. Um, when you're running, like, there's plenty of room there to put FB25 next to that. But it's common when you don't have room. Like, you know, you might not have room in there, for example, to go C216. So that's that capacitor. C14 is that one. C28 is that little jobby. And ferrite bead down there is that one. So that's just common uh, PCB layout technique. Although they still had plenty of room there. So, yeah, I don't see what the problem is. You know, you move this around to here. You could move that down to there. You could certainly move that next to there. Maybe at even an angle where you might 45 degree angle your silk screens and stuff like that. I'm sorry, this is supposed to be a repair video, but I can't help when I notice uh, PCB layout things. So, more cleaning required under that can. Wow, that STR Micro, that didn't come up too well. Did it? That's the clean I did before. Should have inspected that a bit better. It looked looked okay. I'm going to give it a better clean, but clearly it's working because um, that's all micro, you know, it, there's no sort of like impedance issues there. So that's uh, that's obviously working, but I'll give that another squirt because, well, like I said, the bristles are hard to get in there. That's where the ultrasonic cleaner is better, but eh, anyway, I'll clean it all up and I can power this up without the shield on because the shield on there is just like it to get it prevent switching noise getting into you know the analogy stuff or for you know emi reasons and stuff like that so no big deal we can uh, certainly power it up without it well that's a bummer no we're exactly where we were before wah, 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 wah. so this is where a schematic comes in handy not essential but uh, you know if you can get it then it's really gonna uh help you know you don't have to reverse engineer the circuit I couldn't find a service manual. Of course, Sony are famous for their uh, service manuals. They produce absolutely fantastic service manuals. Couldn't find it for this particular model, but I did find one for this uh, HCD20S uh, model. And as you can see, it looks very similar. Um, it doesn't have the Bluetooth and the buttons on the top look a little bit different. So apart from that, I'm hoping that uh, it actually uses the same things. Now, look, here's the bottom of the uh, power board here. It looks, I, I don't know, I haven't seen the bottom of this uh, power board. I should actually get it out and uh, clean that as well. But anyway, um, yeah, check it out. It's extremely comprehensive, right? This is just absolutely nuts. Look, they've got all these test procedures. It's absolutely amazing. Hats off to Sony. Now, check it out. Here is the board, and I'm comparing that with the board I've got here, and well, yeah, nah, um, it's, it's not the same. But I'm hoping that the uh, power circuitry in there is the same because it's got a vacuum fluorescent uh, display as well. So I'm hoping that 24 volt uh, supply 
is exactly the same. Look at these. Look. Look at it. <laughs> look at the detail in this. Disassembly flow diagrams. Absolutely amazing. There you go. So <laughs> me dicking around trying to get this thing apart. It's, it's all here in the service manual. Absolutely brilliant. Hats off to Sony. Um, I mean, this is a 2013 vintage, but I believe they still produce, uh, you know, service manuals like this today. I think this one's from like the 2020s or something. But uh, yeah, anyway, um, it's got the same vacuum fluorescent uh, display on it. So let's have a look. Look at this. Look, it's, just, it's just fantastic. Right, troubleshooting procedures. Oh my goodness. Hats off to everyone at Sony. Anyway, so it's, it's got an MPEG, MPEG decoder. There you go, five watts a channel, it's the same. So anyway, I, I'm not particular I don't particularly care about that. All I care about is the power supply. So 4052, of course there's a 4052 in there, absolute jelly bean. Gonna have to do a jelly bean mux video. That'll be in it. I just love their like component overlays and stuff. They're just absolutely fantastic. They show the traces on there. Oh, it's great. Now, hello, hello, that looks yes. Hello, winner, winner. Is that a chicken dinner? I think it might be. There you go, minus 24 volts. Main board's the first thing. Here's your 12 volt power in. I was measuring 13 volts. That's neither here nor there. So that looks like it certainly might be what's doing in here. So this switching converter is responsible for the plus five volt standby here, as well as the minus 24. So the minus 24, is the one that doesn't seem to be there. Um, and we've got two uh, BAT54S uh, dual diodes in here. So maybe one of those is Kamigatsa, perhaps. I don't know how like the water ingress does that. Maybe it's just a coincidence that it happened to fail when it's doing water ingress or 24 volts was enough to, like there was a low impe lower impedance path there and it caused, and it blew one of the diodes perhaps. Something like that. That wouldn't uh, surprise me at all. So if we go back over to the videotape, here's the converter. What did they say it used? That's a 3482. And we have a 3482. Yes, we do. Can we see two BAT54S diodes? We can indeed. KL, um, I can't remember offhand if that's it, but yeah, they would be. There you go. So they would be the two and is this a high voltage capity doodah here? Yeah, that's 50 volts there. So the thing is, I can feed external uh, 12 volts in here. I can just bodge that in and then uh, power it. Oh, no, because then I've got to turn on the bloody soft uh, power button, don't I? That's annoying. I might just measure the uh, measure the two diodes here because that's all that's failing. Um, I assume the plus 5 volt standby is uh, working because we're able to power the thing up. Presumably that plus five volt standby must be working. I can't imagine that uh, it would fail if it wasn't doing that. So that's the plus five volts um, over here. No, this one seems to be doing a bit extra. It's got another package U26 here. There, that's not part of that. Although, what is it down here? There might be something down here. No, no, there's no extra U's, which is an IC. And Q, of course, is a transistor. Um, so yeah, it's a bit different. We can work with that. Like this is obviously just a separate uh, supply output over here doing something not too concerned. I'm worried about that we're not getting the uh, 24 volts out of here. So let's buzz those out. Now here's where you can come and get so with these dual diode packages. They come in different uh, pinouts. So the BAT, you have to be careful, the BAT54S is this particular pinout here. So the common is pin three, but they actually have them in the opposite direction like that to the BAT54C and the BAT54A. So we got the BAT54S. So let's hope this one uses the S, shall we? Let's go for one and three here. You're not seeing that, but I'm getting 0.22 volts. Other way is open. And this one over here should be 0.22 as well. I'm also getting 0.22 there in that direction and yeah that direction is open and this way should be in the other direction yeah 0.22 there you go so that seems to be correct 0.22 okay yeah no worries swap it around of course you're getting these small voltage drop because of small current that's good both of those are good so so much for that theory diodes are good actually just looking at this it looks like the 12 volts go straight in here through the ferrite bead 
and bam, straight over into the converter. So I shouldn't, I couldn't, can actually power up this board. I don't have to worry about soft starting it. So it looks like the negative 24 volts is on all the time. If we go back to the schematic, yes, yeah, the same thing. Yeah, it shows the same thing. 12 volts in goes directly ferrite bead. So it looks like that's always enabled, yet yeah, there's a permanent, um, th th there's a pull down there for like a power on uh, reset thing on pin seven. But apart from that, that should just work all the time. So I can feed 12 volts into this and just see if I get my 24 volts out. So that we know the diode is good. Um, so maybe, maybe the switcher is Gonski. Um, and maybe this uh, five volt standby is not a thing in this particular model. All right, so I've got my National Instruments virtual bench here. I've got 12 volts, 200 milliamps, whatever. Um, so let's turn that on. I think I got the power around the right way. Uh, I, by the way, uh, pro tip, oh, you can't see it, but uh, just off screen here, I've got some uh, tape just holding down these leads. Because when you've got like leads in this particular case, they're coming off the bench and going over to just down below me here. Um, and yeah, you, you don't want gravity to pull on your leads and then rip it all off or short them or do whatever. So yeah, I do believe uh, negative is that side and positive is over here. So 12 volts, we'll switch that on. I've got my multimeter as well. So yeah, it was current limit there for a second. It's drawing 100 and, okay. Good guess on my part. I might beef that up a bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I might beef that up. There you go, just go 400 milliamps. No magic smoke has escaped. So there you go. That's only like a watt or something standby, which is uh, what you expect out of a product like this. Okay, I just plug the common of the multimeter into the common of the power supply here just so that I only have to use one lead here. So 12 volts there. Obviously, we're gonna get our 12 volts in like Flynn, no worries. So we've got our 12 volts going in here, okay. So that's going into pin two of our uh, converter there. So let's see if we get our uh, 24. We do, we get our minus 24. So what's going on? Our minus 24 is fine. Oh, um, it's what, it's not getting over here. I don't see how it could be like, it's not switching that. The, the, the water damage that we saw over here is doing something. It's not, I think it was pin 12 over here or something. Memory serves me correctly. 18, 16, 14, 12. Yeah, 3.3 volts. <laughs> That's what we're getting before, wasn't it? And pin 12 is definitely on the board, is what it says is minus 24 volts. So what the heck? Measure the other pins. 3.3, minus 24, there you go. The pin doesn't match up. So it's one, three, five, pin seven is minus 24, but it doesn't match up with the silk screen on the other board. What the? I'm sure that's what it said. What? what? I'll get back to you. <laughs> pin 12, 12 is minus 24. <laughs> Pin one, down here. Uh, uh. <laughs> Whoever did this board is not <laughs> talking to the person who did the other board. I assume it's not that like, there's some sort of system mismatch there. That is, that is ridiculous. Oh, wow. Trust my luck to find that. There you go, chasing a red herring down a rabbit hole there. Eh? Pin one's up there. I'm gonna make sure that this ribbon cable's not flipped or something. Dumbass like that. Th there it is there, you can see it. Pin one, it, it, the ribbon cable, pin one goes over to pin 18 over here. <laughs> Unbelievable. Okay, so we are getting that voltage in there. And of course, uh, I must have put the cable back in the right way because we're getting the correct text on the uh, actual display. It was just very dim. I was getting the, I could see the segments that I was getting there and it seemed to be correct, like BT on or something like that. So that's annoying from a troubleshooting point of view. Jeez. But if you remember the pin I was probing over here, which I had the correct data sheet for this, 27 or something, that was the pin and we weren't getting the 24 volts on there. And, and I buzzed it, didn't I? I buzzed that over to here. All right, sanity check on. The CS16312 uh, VEE minus 30 volts is actually minus 24 in this particular case. It is pin 
27, okay? So let's go over here, pin 27, right? I've got complete system sanity check here, right? So I'm going to go from my minus 24 here all the way over. So let's give that a bell. That there, right? And they claim it's pin 12, right? <laughs> it's not. It's not. I'm getting continuity to nothing. Are you kidding me? Right, so I already discovered it was on... Oh, no. Oh, look. Oh, no. That's going to explain it. I bet you that's the actual pin. Are you kidding me? No. And because, because, because... Oh, I can't be this unlucky, right? Because this has been hidden all this time, right? Every time I go to put that in, this was actually taped to the chassis, this side of it, so I couldn't see that backside. It's got no... It's got a bloody pin. That's that's the pin. Buzz between my 24 volt and... Yeah, yeah. I... <laughs> Murphy, I told you, found it. It's maybe it's because the first time I ever pushed that back in after I took it out, and then the first time I pushed it back in, it was enough to cause that to come off. So, so, so I think the cleaning, of course, fixed it because we we know that we established it wasn't even going into standby. It wasn't doing anything, and then the, the missing bloody pin has come off the back side of that. It's just peeled off. Of course, they're just held down with adhesive on the back of these tapes here, right? So I can glue that back down, but that must have come off the first time I ever put that back in. Oh, yeah, look, there's another one too. That's starting to come up. You can see it. What a turd burglar. So there you go. <laughs> here I was plugging it in and out, trying to like constantly doing this trying to troubleshoot and it was a physical connection a physical reconnection as part of the reassembly process after cleaning this thing that caused it to not give me the minus 24 oh you bugger anyway all right i'm going to attempt to stick that back down i don't have to i can just like carefully shove it in there never take it out again maybe that's the best way to do it i'll just try and stick it back in there and, and never take it out again and I can just reassemble the thing. I can carry it over there in while it's connected and just leave it connected. Bob's your uncle. And I, I think this is going to work now. Unbelievable. Yeah, I'm just going to bend that back down there. Keep some force on it while it's inserted. Sorry, this is not the best view. There we go. We're in. All right. Let's try it this time. Power on. And haha, -ha, I see a segment. There we go. <laughs> Winner! Don't know why it's flashing like that. What is it? Standby. Oh, it says standby. And it's got a couple of digits that are... Yeah, okay. Uh, maybe some extra cleaning required on some of those pins perhaps, but it's working again. So, there you go. Oh. All right, reassembled. Here we go. It's powered on. Hello? Volume. BT Audio. The display is actually not great, but I kind of remember it being like that i kind of remember it being pretty crappy like that but anyway it now works it's functional all this stuff is inside there it is the winner winner chicken dinner <laughs> anyway i hope you like that uh, repair video turn that oh, god that guy's annoying so there you go i hope you enjoyed that uh, adventure there on <laughs> repairing this it was yeah it was basically just water ingress had to clean the board uh pretty much and then completely come a gutsa unknown because that ribbon cable was facing the back and i couldn't see those pins when i inserted that uh back in after i cleaned everything and that pin just lifted off and then i started you know, chasing a red herring down a rabbit hole but i did find the actual uh culprit i did track it down to the correct pin and it turned out to be 
that um, yeah the VFD line so anyway um, check out my video how VFD vacuum fluorescent uh, displays work in fact this is why I extracted this video out because I like had a VFD issue and I oh yeah I did a video on VFDs and uh, I realized I had to extract that out and like there's value in extracting uh, that one out and it turned out to be the actual um, anode uh, drive voltage on there which <laughs> is causing the problem so anyway if you like that video please give it a big thumbs up and as always discuss down below catch you next time